Australian researchers have made a major breakthrough in the understanding of motor neurone disease. Now this is a really curious story. They've discovered how toxins contained in blue-green algae damage the central nervous system leading to motor neurone disease. They're claiming a causal relationship which is a, a phenomenal breakthrough. Dr Rachel Dunlop from the University of Technology in Sydney is the first author on this study and she joins us now. Rachel Dunlop, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning Virginia. Thanks for having me. Oh no, it's, it's great to talk to you about this. It's Fascinating. So you've you've made a connection between the toxins in blue-green algae and the attack on the central nervous system. What is that link? Well, actually, that link's been known for some time, but we've discovered actually how it might happen. So we've unraveled the mechanism. Um, for a long time, people have noticed that um, if you're exposed to a lot of blue-green algal toxins, if you eat food that's contaminated with blue-green algal toxins, you have a higher risk of getting motor neuron disease. And we've been able to figure out exactly how that might happen. And what was your eureka moment? How did you find that? Um, I guess because we... Um, we're cell biologists and we don't generally talk to plant scientists and we had some plant scientists come to us and say hey we've made this observation what do you think and together as a team we just we were able to figure out this problem quite quickly and so it's it's the transference itself does it mean then that if any if anyone develops motor neuron disease there has been logically speaking there has been some exposure to blue green algae no, it doesn't mean that. And of course, in Australia, we have a lot of algal blooms. So if um, everyone that was exposed to algae in Australia doesn't have motor neuron disease, in fact, it's quite a rare disease. Mm -hmm. um, but we think that it's possibly part of a number of factors that might come together in susceptible people to trigger the disease. So what, what is the mechanism for transference? Or, or am I getting here into an era, era of, of your, your specialty that none of us are going to understand the answer to? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually quite simple. It's a compound made by the algae which mimics a compound that humans use to make their proteins and it can trick our body into thinking that it's our own um, and when it's used in our proteins instead of the one we normally use it makes proteins that don't work properly and they basically build up in your cells over time and eventually kill the cells and this can possibly lead to the death of motor neurons like you see in motor neuron disease. I understood that. Thank you. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's very straightforward. All right, so what does this mean then in trying to develop some sort of therapy for people who might develop motor neuron disease? Yeah, well, I mean, this is a very basic science discovery. We haven't uh, worked with um, patients on this yet, but obviously that's what we want to do next, um, is try to find ways to maybe stop this toxin getting into people's proteins. Um, and there are a number of ways we can do that, and we're exploring some of those at the moment in the United States with some very early stage planning for the clinical trials and hopefully that might have implications for other diseases mm. uh, like Alzheimer's as well as uh, motor neuron disease. Well it's funny you should say that because I was thinking there's something about this conversation that that's, that's, uh, uh, reminds me of the process of, of Alzheimer's and the same sort of you know uh, protein build, build up if you like or the, or the, um, the incorrect protein you know being used that, that's similar but then you'd have to you'd have to come up with something wouldn't you that was that was a prophylactic treatment that, that maybe was a treatment that in, in case we came in contact with the blue green algae. Is that yes. the way you're thinking? Yes, of course. That would be the most logical way to do that. And of course, how would you um, do that if you don't know if people have been yeah. exposed? That's the catch-22. Um, I guess ideally we're looking eventually down the track for some sort of marker or biomarker in people that may have been exposed but also are susceptible. There are genes involved in motor neuron disease as well. About 90% of it is not genetic, but clearly the genes are involved as well as environmental triggers and people's uh, Physiology is all different, so it's obviously more complicated than we could ever, um, you know, put, put down in five minutes. And Rachel Dunlop, given that you do real work and, and I don't, can you um, <laughs> can you explain to me and share with our viewers just what that feeling is like as a scientist when you make that breakthrough moment and you think you've actually discovered something that might even end up changing people's lives? Well, I have to say it's incredibly emotional because um, particularly with motor neuron disease, it's a terrible disorder. Mm. Um, it comes on quickly, um, mostly in men and at the peak of their lives when they're around their 40s. And in many cases, from the time to diagnosis to death is about three years. And it doesn't affect your brain function. People may be aware that Stephen Hawking has motor neuron disease. Yes. Um, but it affects your ability to move, to breathe, to swallow, to speak. And so effectively, you're watching yourself die, which is a horrible, horrible thing for someone to see. So I've 
I've spoken to patients, I've been with people who have this disease and my overwhelming aim with this work is to find a cure or at least something that can slow this disorder because it's such a horrible thing for people to have. Rachel Dunlop, we are backing you the whole way in that venture. Congratulations, go well. Thank you.